How can you tell if somebody who's been married before and divorced or widowed is still too attached to their adult children? This is something that comes up in second marriages um, a, a lot, especially with my coaching clients. I'll share one story first of my own situation. When I married my husband, uh, I gained three stepsons, and they're wonderful, and I love them dearly, and they love me. But in the beginning, I remember that my husband felt bad about the divorce that he'd been through years before. And he was trying to really show his kids he loved them and he wanted to make them happy. And so one of the things that was happening when I first joined the team there was that we would go out to dinner um, to their favorite pizza restaurant every single time. That's where the boys wanted to go. And we'd get ready to go out to dinner and he would say, well, where, where do you guys want to go? He never asked me. And I was like, hello? Um, you know, everything was fine, but he was in a habit of pleasing the kids and especially putting them first. As, you know, so this is very typical after a divorce. You feel bad about what your kids have been through. You feel guilty. You're trying to make, up to, make it up to them. But what happens, I was sitting there um, and, and one day I just said, you know what? I'm getting tired of the pizza place. I'd like to go somewhere else. And everybody kind of looked at me like they'd never even thought about that. They were wonderful. They were fine. And we went somewhere else and there was really no problem. It was just a habit that people had gotten into and I had to have the courage to speak up. And you know, at first when you're in a new relationship and there are children from a prior relationship, you want to be accommodating and loving and you don't want to like impose anything of yours on anybody. But there comes a time when you have to speak up. The rubber will hit the road. I know, sadly, in a lot of situations, um, the, uh, uh, the divorced parent or the widowed parent who's still too attached to the kids uh, will say, well, you know what? You're the adult. They're the kids. I never get to see them that often. Can't you just do what we want to do? There's nothing wrong with that inherently, but if it becomes a habit that you're always expected to accommodate anybody else, not just kids, but, you know, neighbors or m mom and dad or anybody, then there's a disorder in the relationship. Marriage, by its very nature, has certain demands and principles. And that is, after God, your spouse comes first, except in the cases of life and death, obviously, and sickness. But that's something that's real hard for people to understand. And I, I want to explore that with you in this short video. Uh, another example I'm thinking about is one of my coaching clients. I won't name her, but she's um, dating a, a widowed man. And they've been friends. They were friends and neighbors for a long time, go to the same parish. They get along great, but he has several children, uh, adult children, who are worried that this new woman is after his money. And, you know, what does she really want? And they're making a lot of demands on come, you know, come to our house for dinner. We don't want to go to her house. So he's caught between his children and his new love interest, which is my client. And he's really afraid to rock the boat. He doesn't want to make his kids upset or angry. Uh, and he's asking her to, you know, sit in second place. And again, there are times when that is appropriate, but as a habit, no. So she's very upset. And she said, and I asked her, I said, what would you do if he said, you know what? You're most important. My kids all want to go <clears throat> to this place for the holidays or whatever, but we're going to go where you want to go because you're first and, you know, I want to put you first, whatever. She told me, and I know this is true. That if he would say that, that's all he needs to say, she's happy then to let go and go where the kids want. That's the natural thing. We, we as, as spouses, we want to make kids happy and we want to accommodate the family, but we don't want it to be expected that our needs and our desires are absolutely at the bottom of the barrel. So let's talk about why somebody, after divorce or being widowed, would be too attached, overly attached to their adult children. 
To understand that, let's look at some of the five basic integrity needs that we all, we all need. We all need to belong. We all need to have a safe place in the world. So, you know, your family is, is it, supposed to be it. And when you lost, lost a spouse due to divorce or, uh, you know, or death, it's natural to lean in and attach yourself to the children. They remain the place, your safe place and where you belong. And that's a need you have. But we can have what the church calls inordinate attachment. It's for fear of letting go or losing it. The next integrity need that we have is to matter and to have value. As parents, our children, whether they're little or adult, give us a sense of we matter because we there and we have value. We're their parent. We have a, we play an important part in their lives. We can do things for them. They love us. We love them. It helps us. It, it satisfies that integrity need. So with our children, we belong and we matter and we have value. We don't want to lose that. We also want to have free will. We don't want some new person coming in uh, telling us that we can't go to dinner at this restaurant with our kids or make this choice with our kids. We don't want to be controlled. So again, this is our, our basic needs are setting us up to, you know, be attached to our kids and not want anybody else to come in and tell us what to do about that. The fourth integrity need we have of the five I'm sharing today is to be good, to be good. We have a need to be good. And a lot of us have defined in our mind that being a good parent makes us a good person. To be a good person, I make my children happy. I don't make waves. I give them what they want. I do what they want. And when they're, my kids are happy, then I'm a good parent and therefore I'm a good person. Again, in a certain sense, we can be using the children and their happiness to satisfy our integrity, our ego need to be a good person. There's, we could do a whole series on this, but let's look at the fifth uh, integrity need. We all have a need to belong and have a safe place in the world to matter and have value, to have a free will, to be good. And the last one is to have a meaningful mission. What's my purpose in life? Well, I'm a parent. I'm going to be a parent forever. Even in heaven, you will still be the parent of your children. So it makes us feel good if our, if our marriage has fallen apart or our spouse has died or we're not working anymore or we got fired or whatever. At least we have a meaningful mission to be good parents to our children. And if we've defined that, that to our being a good parent and a good person and that mission is to make them happy, we are codependent, we're enmeshed, we're overattached, and we're not in a healthy place for a new marital relationship. So that's kind of a long way of coming around. Um, but let's look at these, these uh, four points. Attachment to our children provides many of these human needs. And we're afraid. We don't want to give that up. We would like to have a new relationship and still have the, the kids. We want the kids the center of our life, but we want the new relationship the center of our life. Well, actually, the only person who should be center of your life is God. And if anybody else is the center of your life, I think that begs uh, examination of uh, there may be an overattachment to that. Marriage naturally demands a shift in this. Marriage naturally demands a shift in whatever that attachment, especially to our children, is in favor of the new spouse. Um, this, is, this is why people after divorce, um, you know, especially with little kids, uh, don't, you can't discipline my kids. I'll discipline my kids. You, dis you know, we're afraid to really upset uh, that warm, loving, safe, belonging, mattering attachment that we, to, we have to our children. But as you and I know, the older we get, the more we should learn that our children are, are gods and they were given to us for a time and purpose. But are we really are supposed to have loose hands at the older we get and the older we get. Uh, they get to to let them go, to let them fly, and to and to be uh, uh, pro appropriately attached. Um, we can have both. You can have a spouse, a new spouse, and you can have your kids' love and affection. 
but it must be held in balance after God and it must be priority must be given most of the time in appropriate ways to the new spouse. This can trigger adult children, uh, ruffle their feathers, and you can get anxious and worried about it. That's where a good Catholic coach can help you to learn how to see it properly, set boundaries or whatever. When we're too attached, here's the bottom line, when we're too attached to our adult children, we cannot give a new spouse what is due them. When we are too attached to our adult children, we cannot give what is properly due a new spouse, and that is primacy of place in an appropriate way. So how do you know? You're dating somebody, you're talking to somebody, you've met them on Catholic Match, so far everything is great. How do you know that they might be too attached to their kids? Well, here are a few quick signs. Um, they talk to their children every single day for a long time. Now, again, if you talk to your kids every single day, I'm not, not saying that's wrong. I'm saying just look at it. Why are you talking every single day to your children? It may be nothing. It may be something. Um, an, another sign is that they share every detail of their life with their adult children. They have turned their children into confidants and, um, and companions and, and, ben, and best friends. And again, there are elements of that in a relationship with your kids. is beautiful. But it could be out of order. It could, have, it could be dysfunctional. Um, so they're sharing too much. They may be talking all about you to their kids. Uh, and maybe you, you have some areas of your relationship you would like to keep private. They may be sharing secrets with their kids or their kids and have secrets and that you don't know about. You're left out because, again, your new spouse or your potential new spouse is afraid to ruffle feathers or make waves and is in the middle trying to manage both sides. That's never going to work. That's always going to blow up in everybody's face. Um, they may always ask you to accommodate the kids, always, and give the same excuse. They're kids. They're my kids. You don't understand. I love them. I never see them. We have to do whatever they want all the time. So if they're too accommodating to the kids. Um, also, here's another one. Are the adult children still taking money from them? Borrowing money uh, on a rate. Again, once in a while, yes, I've done it. As a, as a kid, I did it to my parents. As a parent, I've done it to the kids. But is it habitual and regular? Is there a co-dependence? Is there an over-dependency of the child on the parent that makes the parent feel good because the kids still need me and then I have a meaningful mission and they love me and I belong and I feel good? So again, getting their, their basic ego needs met through the relationship with the kids. It's a real sticky situation, but I thought we should address it because it happens to so many people in second marriage situations. So um, don't be afraid. Again, like I say this all the time, don't be afraid, but bring it up and talk about it and watch. And, you know, be like me. You know, when you are finally meeting them and their adult children and they're and they're, everybody's going somewhere and you don't want to go there or you'd like something different, speak up and see what happens. Um, there may be a lot of reasons that people are in this position. You might not be able to fix it or change it, and you might have to exit the relationship, or appropriately, with guidance of a good counselor or coach, you can tolerate and accommodate and accept a level of this in your new, in your new relationship, a level of this but not over the top. So again, it's a lot to think about. Um, I'm here for you. Catholic Match is so great that they want to, you know, give you uh, content that really is helpful to you to, to have a successful and healthy relationship after divorce or being widowed. So be honest with yourself. Be honest with them. Trust God. Take the high path. Take a breath. Just relax. And don't forget to have fun. Thank you.